Ciao guys and welcome back, it's your friend Luca and in today's video I want to talk about uh, what I consider the best 35mm lens that I have and actually my favorite from uh, all the lenses I have and I'm talking about the Zeiss Classic 35mm f2 for Nikon mount stay tuned depending for how long you're following my channel you probably know that i started to build my set of uh, contacts dies around one and a half year ago but now i start to replace those contacts dies for the Zeiss classic the reasons why i decided to swap my contacts dies lenses for the Zeiss classic are pretty simple first of all the aperture blades this uh, Zeiss classic they all have nine aperture blades so i'm gonna have a constant look through the wall set of lenses and at the second place i like the idea that you can set the aperture to f22 or f16 depending on the lens how fast it is and then just with the adapter you can control the iris of your lens so you're gonna pretty much have a cinema declicked lens for nuts while with the contact size i should have sent them to someone to let them declick and dump the aperture ring properly to have uh, the same results so in my opinion it's way more convenient to buy the Zeiss Classic over the contact Zeiss if you want to save some money and another reason why I decided to move to the Zeiss Classic is because since I start to build my set of Leica R uh, the Summicron's F2 aperture I start to love more and more the f2 aperture lenses the reason why i love the f2 lenses over the f1.4 or f2.8 is pretty simple uh, it's because they get the best of both apertures uh, with less uh, compromises so in my opinion it makes a lot of sense to have lenses that are not extremely fast also because i shoot with full frame cameras 35 mm for 24 so i don't really have problems of low light where i need have a f1.4 lens but let's talk about this lens this 35 uh, millimeter from Zeiss this lens is absolutely gorgeous it has a pretty cool uh, character that uh, you may love or not so in this video I want to talk about more the character of the lens instead of uh, pixel peeping the rendering of the lens because uh, yeah there are many tests out there online but nobody's really talking about the the character of this lens because it has a pretty strong character that you should uh, understand first of all this lens has a strong barrel distortion similar to the 28 mm f2 hollywood lens and you can see it from the front element of the lens it has a pretty nice curvature and the cool thing about this characteristic of the lens is that if you place your subject to the center of the frame a pretty wide aperture like f2 or f2.8 your main subject is gonna pop out more from your picture or video and this is extremely useful if you are shooting in pretty flat and boring uh, scenes where you need a little bit of uh, character in your uh, images and if you're worried about this strong barrel distortion uh, consider that if you stop down the aperture to f5.6 uh, the lens start to be a little bit more neutral and also consider that the barrel distortion is not that strong like the hollywood 28 mm f2 so this is a more um, uh, neutral subtle uh, hollywood version of the lens another great character of this lens are the chromatic aberrations if you shoot wide open at f2 or f2.8 you can say look you're crazy why do you like chromatic aberrations in my case i don't see too many chromatic aberrations from this lens or the zeiss classic in general because i'm using the panasonic lumix s1 the s5 and now also the leica sl as a replacement of the s5 and the sensors of these cameras have a pretty thin protective glass in front of the sensor and that helps to reduce the amount of chromatic aberration in digital sensors because these lenses were designed and built uh, considering the film photography and the digital photography and having a camera with a thin glass element that protect the sensor will help a lot to reduce the amount of chromatic aberrations of your lenses the reason why i like to have a little bit of chromatic aberrations is because they tend to uh, give an image that looks more uh, realistic let's say it is a personal choice it's not for everyone 
but uh, if you like sort of uh, a realistic look and with a little bit of imperfections uh, this is a great lens to consider the chromatic aberrations don't really go away until you stop down to f 5.6 but uh, in my opinion they are totally tolerable i will show you some sample footage and uh, pictures in between the video so you can see what i'm talking about another great feature of this lens is the focus ring and the focus scale uh, it is extremely smooth and well damped and it has a sort of logarithmic scale so it's extremely precise from 0.3 meters to 0.7 meters and then when you start to reach one meter to infinite uh, it is uh, pretty short and this is great if you want to shoot uh, fast photos and videos because you pretty much work from one meter to infinite just with a little turn that is extremely handy if you uh, work as a filmmaker and you don't have a focus puller with you but also with photography because it's extremely fast and easy to grab focus properly shall we talk about sharpness let's talk about sharpness this lens is extremely sharp already at f2 until the medium region of the frame but it's a little bit soft in the rendering of the skin and the fine details and let's say at the medium uh, close-up range so it's great for portraits if you don't want to do much post-production to soften the skin of uh, the people you're photographing and when you stop down the lens to f4 it's gonna be extremely sharp corner to corner and you're gonna also see a drop in the amount of vignetting in the whole image and another great feature of this lens and the Zeiss Classic in general is the amount of contrast that you can get from this lens because these lenses tend to have uh, a little bit of uh, eye contrast uh, considering the highlights but the readout in the shadows is gonna be pretty cool and visible because they tend to read a lot of information in the shadows uh, but it's, they're gonna be a little bit more harsh in the highlights rendition but you can fix that pretty easily just with a diffusion filter and I don't see the problem about it because uh, uh, I need to use a diffusion filter anyway because I use a 24 megapixel full frame sensor that doesn't have optical low pass filter so I need something to soften a little bit the image to don't have the digital look regarding the color rendition all the Zeiss Classic are pretty much uh, color matched they all have a pretty neutral look in the colors and the saturation they are a little bit contrasted so that's why you can think that the saturation is a little bit higher compared to other lenses but they are not like uh, so pushed like the Nikon lenses that are always mm, crunchy uh, the Zeiss Classic are a little bit more neutral in my opinion and um, yeah I can use this lens pretty much for every type of project I can think about it is extremely versatile I can use it for landscape photography if I need the corner to corner sharpness I can stop down this lens to f8 and yeah take amazing landscape photos i can use it for astrophotography because this is a fast lens and if i need a wider perspective i can always uh, take a panoramic uh, session of photos and merge them together in post-production so it's not a big problem i can use it for portrait photography because that f2 is extremely smooth with the skin so this lens is pretty much perfect if you stop down the aperture to f 5.6 but if you want to have a little bit of character you can keep it open to f2 or f 2.8 you're gonna have amazing results but with character as well so i consider this lens extremely versatile and i think it's the best lens you can buy there are still some on ebay uh, because uh, this lens is not produced anymore it has been replaced by the Zeiss Milvus that are pretty nice as well but uh, I prefer the classic version because I like more poppy and more contrastic image uh, coming out from the lens if you are thinking to buy fully manual lenses I highly recommend you to consider the Zeiss classic ZF and not the ZE for Canon mount so you should get the Nikon mount because you're gonna have the clicked lens full manual control of the lens and uh, yeah they are pretty rare but they are extremely good if you're thinking to use this 35mm f2 as a replacement 
or a temporary replacement for your uh, Leica R 35mm f2 I would say that this is not a real good match in your set because uh, yeah they are too different I mean uh, it's pretty contrasty it's uh, pretty sharp it has the barrel distortion it doesn't really match with the other some microns in your set of lenses it is a little bit different than the 21 mm f 2.8 that you could use it as a replacement of the 19 mm f 2.8 so i don't really advise to get this lens to replace the 35 mm f 2 so micron i love this silver finish look how shiny can take some attention so be careful when you go around in the dangerous places it's not a low profile lens it's also quite big and heavy i have to say it's not that small uh, also because of the adapter i mean if you will use it in a dslr camera i mean it's not that big but when you start to add the adapter it starts to be a little bit long and uh, a bit front heavy for example i love the ergonomic of this lens on the s1 but on the S5, it's a little bit uh, front heavy. Not that much, but uh, on the S1, it's more comfortable to use this lens. So this is it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comment below what do you think about this lens. And also, if you would like to see a comparison between this and the Leica R 35mm f2, in reality, it will come, so you don't have to write anything. Um, I'm just collecting the material to show you better what both lenses are capable of. So, thank you so much for watching and I hope I'll see you next time. Ciao! <laughs> I was dying.